Namaskar. I am Dr. Juri Hazarika from Bhuben Hazarika School of Mass Communication of Krishnakanta Handiko State Open University. I welcome you all to the program on Master of Arts in Mass Communication and Journalism. And today we are going to discuss the first paper of semester one of this program. So this uh, first course is named as Concept of Communication and now we are going to discuss the unit number one of this course. The unit number one is named as Concept of Communication and after the discussions that we, uh, that we will hold in this particular unit, in particular session, you will be able to define the term communication outline the process of communication and explain the seven C's of communication. So this is the first unit of the course as I have already said and here we will try to introduce you to the basic concept of communication and how the process of communication takes place between uh, the human beings. So all of us we know that communication is a very simple term and it transcends each and every walk of human life and that's why it is uh, considered as very important for the existence very existence of the daily lives of the human beings so this term the communication term has been derived from the latin roots communis and communicare so both these terms both these concepts they imply sharing and mutual understanding okay sharing of anything and the mutual understanding between the human beings so it is something uh, from which the concept of communication has been derived from and that's how we can understand that communication means to share any knowledge any feelings any ideas or information so, so in the case of face to face communication when two human beings are conversing face to face uh, it is uh, merely an exchange of information okay? it is not merely an exchange of information but it also includes you know the gestures the expression the facial expressions the gestures of the hands and eyes the language the kind of language that is used okay the kind of tones okay whether the tone is often uh, of uh, whether the tone uh, displays anger or kindness or love so these all things uh, together uh, comes into the entire process of communication and which makes the communication process successful and uh, you know the the impact uh, the impact of this particular uh, communication that is uh, that uh, falls on both the parties both the communicators uh, that who are conversing or taking part in this in that uh, communication process and the uh, you know the behavior the personality of the persons involved in the communication process also affects the entire communication system and uh, vice versa the communication system may in turn affect the behavior and personality of the persons that are taking part in the communication process so if we move to the definition part then communication is a uh, very simply we can say that it is an all encompassing activity uh, and it has a far reaching uh, you know importance or influence or impact on the uh, on the humanity over humanity over human beings okay so uh, in a way it, uh, we can say that it is uh, it is very important and it is a driving force for the humankind uh, anywhere in the world because this is a simple act of the simple act of sharing and exchanging information uh, you know it, it is important to understand the views the feelings and interest of uh, of the fellow human beings and it in turn you know affects the attitudes and status of mind uh, and the uh, you know, the way of living uh, in almost every part of the uh, world now the communication process it happens two ways so first we we, sh we have to know the mental status of somebody else and the second we might if we are interested in getting across our status of mind to someone 
we will rely on the process of communication okay it is it is merely the sharing and receiving of uh, the kind of feelings or information that uh, an individual want to share with another so if we uh, try to uh, look at some of the communication definitions that has been shared over the years by uh, different communication experts uh, we can see that william Sh uh, shram william shram he said that communication is a uh, is sharing of experiences on the basis of commonness again from by commonness he is implying uh, the attributes the behavioral patterns the uh, the kind of personality that uh, the communicators the persons who are involved in the communication that they possess okay so this is the just the sharing of experiences then cloud shannon another uh, communication expert he said that uh, communication is uh, about you know within quotes one mind affecting the other again here we are talking about you know the mental status understanding the mental status of one person by another through the communication process uh, then again in 1961 uh, Ligens uh, he mentioned that uh, within quotes a process by which two or more people exchange ideas facts feelings or impression in such a way that in such ways that each gains a common understanding of meaning intent and use of messages okay so this through this process if one exchanges the ideas and feelings and uh, you know whatever uh, one want to pass on mm, so there will be a you know it, it comes towards the common understanding of derivation of meaning okay derivation of the intent and then uh, the in the next step the uh, the usage of the messages that has been passed on okay so overall we can say that communication is the mother of existence for human beings now let us see how the communication process takes place okay so uh, in our daily life we are always making use of communication we are communicating all the time so uh, if we try to understand in that in the, te the technicalities of the process uh, we can understand that there is a person who always you know start the process of the communication uh, you know the proceedings so that that person is uh, described as is termed as the sender of the messages the word sender comes here uh, so we have to understand that the sender implies the person who sends the message okay the uh, the, the the person who you know initiates the process of communication then on the other end of the communication process is the receiver the person who you know receives the communication message uh, for example uh, here we can take one example that the sender wakes up in the morning and uh, you know asks uh, the another person staying in the house for a glass of water so the sender would form a suitable sentence the sender would form a sentence for example uh, can you please give me a glass of water so, or kindly hand me a glass of water so that is the the message so that that particular sentence that the um, the sender has formed in his mind and said to the other person that is the message okay so the other person will hear the message hear the sentence and will try to understand okay will try to understand the meaning of the sentence um, so th that person is the receiver okay the receiver will try, try to decode the message okay so these terms decode and encoding these are important in the communication process and based on that the other person uh, if he or she understands the message and thinks of handing over a glass of water to the to the sender then uh, that person will act in that way okay so the the act of the person or the answer of the person the receiver is termed as the feedback okay the response then now we can come to the aspect of channel so channel is basically the carrier of the information or the carrier of the message that we want to send to the other party okay so uh, the channel may come across as the language that we use okay if one is if the sender is forming a sentence in english or assamese or hindi or any other language that please hand over me a glass of water so that uh, that the language okay the, the body language the gestures that the receiver might uh, you know use to ask for a glass of water all these uh, can be described under the term channel 
So let's uh, talk about uh, the words that I have already said, the encoding. That means uh, encoding means forming the message. Okay, As I have given in the example, the, uh, the sender has formed the message as can you uh, hand over me a glass of water so that is encoding okay forming the sentence forming the message that term can be simply understood as uh, encoding and the opposite is decoding that means you know hearing and trying to uh, you know understand the message uh, that has been given uh, by the sender that is decoding the receiver does the job of decoding by trying to understand trying to deci deciphering the message that has been given Okay, so these are the important terms that we have to keep in mind while uh, trying to understand the process of communication. Uh, then again, there is another important uh, term, that uh, important concept we can say that we need to know uh, that comes uh, most of the time in the communication studies. That is the word. Uh, that is the word noise. Okay, so noise basically refers to the various types of disturbances. The, the hindrances that might take place in a communication process that might hinder the process of uh, a, a successful uh, communication process. So this, these disturbances, they may uh, cause distortions in the smooth flow of the communication process. They may hamper the proper understanding of the messages or the informations that are being exchanged uh, between the communicators. So uh, the there are different kind of uh, noise, the physical noise, mental noise, psychological noises. So we will come to that in the later part of the course. So here you just need to know this term and its a basic meaning that anything that disrupts the communication process uh, during its, uh, you know, uh, process or during its understanding, uh, these all are clubbed under the term called noise. Okay. Now let us see the need for communication. So we already have discussed again and again that there is the uh, there is the basic need of communication for the existence of the environments, uh, the physical, biological, or social. So it is always important to communicate through communication only. Uh, you know the the uh, the human beings living in the social structure will be able to understand their concerns, their needs, their plans. Uh, you know, for that that purpose, uh, we can always say that we can always understand the importance or need of communication for uh, the society to have a smooth uh, you know smooth uh, process so communication between uh, the different stakeholders of the society uh, can lead to you know different new opportunities okay uh, it can uh, lead to the uh, evolution of uh, different new ideas okay uh, so it it has a hand in the man's evolution you can say so communication facilitates the flow of uh, information and understanding between different people and different groups and uh, which is very important for the uh, you know better understanding better uh, functionality of a society so communication does you know helps in understand uh, helps people in understanding better you know remo removing misunderstandings and creating a clarity of thoughts and clarity of expressions so it also educates people okay so the sharing of uh, uh, knowledge and information process cannot function without uh, the existence of communication. So it is the foundation of human relationships. It helps people to express emotion, ideas, and help to understand. You know, the, these emotions and thoughts can of of one individual can be understood by the other. So, uh, you know, communication it acts as a base for any action, okay? base for any activity, any. Uh, process that emerges in the ideas in the in the uh, in a society and uh, it leads the it leads the society to take action uh, on a particular uh, topic or a particular issue okay so if we come to human communication uh, so we have already discussed that it, it has been a part of the human society the communication has been a part of the human society since time immemorial so communication enables humans and other life forms to interact with each other uh, and share information so from the very beginning of the human society there has been examples of communication taking place between uh, different individuals okay uh, so human beings they communicate in a, a rich and sophisticated way we know that we have different we have developed language we have developed codes uh, so we have different means to communicate which uh, is not seen in other animals 
so we can say that human beings they they communicate in a sophisticated manners as compared to other species so human communication takes place through the use of sound vision and physical contact okay so sound when we say sound it includes speech it includes language okay the sounds that we make okay so it will speech and language they uh, they uh, form a major part of the sound and when we say uh, there are vocalizations okay when we say sound there is the uh, clapping of hands uh, if we encourage somebody we uh, do the you know we clap our hands so it is one kind of communication like we are encouraging we are appreciating isn't it there is foot tapping so there are different other sounds that are made by the human beings to express their feelings to you know to communicate something so when we come to vision uh, vision when we say vision we are talking about you know the sight the see the things that we can see so it includes the facial expressions if somebody is angry you can understand by looking at the facial expressions right uh, and uh, different eye contacts different gestures okay people make gestures with their eyes with their mouth with hands then the body language whether the person is um, offended or you know welcoming so this kind of if somebody extends the hands to uh, you know uh, you know shake hands with you so these are body languages that will imply something that will imply uh, the communication imply the messages that will bring forth the messages from one person to another then there is the physical contact uh, the physical contact uh, includes you know hugging somebody patting somebody on the back saying yes you have done a good job right handshakes uh, when you meet somebody for the first time these are simple uh, you know formal uh, physical contact between two persons that you know um, uh, shows the uh, the feelings or the kind of messages that they want to share with each other so all these three parts you know these are the part of the human communication sound vision and physical contact human communication is the product of a combination of all these things okay so there are uh, body postures gestures that we have already discussed then physical proximity uh, between the communicators okay the kind of gap the kind of distance that two individuals keep between them keep between them while communicating this also gives a message if you are com conversing with somebody very close to you the physical proximity between the two persons would be less then uh, you know when somebody two strangers are talking uh, between themselves so these are all you know the messages that can that the symbolisms the kind of you know um, uh what you can say the things that we see in our day to day life if you decode them if you try to understand them you will be able to understand the communication process the the technicalities of the communication process in a better way okay so an important factor in the nature of relationship among uh, the individuals the communicators and how will they know each other okay so these all forms these all are the base for all the gestures and body postures that one might take or uh, you know take into consideration while conversing with uh, another person now let us uh, discuss the different uh, you know seven c's of communication which is very important and which has uh, been uh, basically formed as a guideline for the choice of content and style of presentation uh, and this has been given by you know francis j bergin uh, so let us discuss them and try to understand them one by one uh, the first being credibility when we say credibility we are talking about trust or belief okay so the climate of trust or belief uh, has to be mostly uh, formed by the communicator the communicator the sender has to establish one's credibility that i am a person you can trust or the things that i am saying are trustworthy or you know i'm speaking the truth so uh, it is a process it is a uh, you know uh, over the years over the over a time period the sender can form a you know establish one's credibility so that the messages that the sender sends or gives uh, can be taken into full trust by the receivers so it credibility it forms a very important part in the communication process if the receivers do not have the full trust on the sender then the 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 message that has been given it will have another kind of implication on the receiver 
okay the sender might be sending a message with something some objectives in one's mind but if there is no credibility of the sender then that the objectives of the sender might not be fulfilled in uh, in connection with the receivers so credibility that c is very important in the communication process that is one the second is the context so when we say context we are basically referring to the environment in which the communicator is sending one's message okay the uh, the context the environment the the area okay uh, the situation the base upon which the communication process is taking place basically the setting so it is very important to know the setting to know the base the context or because of which the communication process is taking place for so this is uh, necessary for the communication to be successful okay so if we are talking for example if we are talking about uh, you know uh, the the political situation of the country then we have to understand the context okay uh, we have to understand what kind of government is there what happened 10 years back what was the what is going to happen what is the expectation we have to understand the kind of uh, the the kind of people that are living in the country okay so uh, if we take one example this can be one to understand the uh, term context in the uh, in the communication process the third is the content okay the content basically means uh, the content of the message okay when when one uh, message is uh, sent by the receiver what all things are there okay in that particular message what are things are included in the message that is the content for example here in this situation uh, when i am teaching you about the concept of communication the content of this message as a as a sender the content of my message is about the uh, about this particular course about the concepts that are included in the uh, communication in mass communication so this is the content okay uh, so uh, it also determines the audience okay so this content is for the audience only the audience the, the people who have taken admission in the master degree course of uh, mass communication isn't it it is not for political science students or sociology students so this is the content so it, it will determine the audience as well so the next C is the clarity clarity means uh, how easy easily the uh, the message is understood how clear it is uh, okay and how the things have been planned how they have been planned in the message so that it can be easily understood by the receivers so clarity is very important and uh, while forming a message one has to take into account the audience the receiver okay whether they will be able to understand or not okay keeping that in mind a message needs to be formulated so that it, it has clarity and it, it will be easier to understand by the uh, people by the audience by your receivers so that is very important clarity is important in a while forming a message the next is continuity and consistency continuity basically means uh, since communication uh, is a process that is unending so you have to understand the phases you have to uh, give the message in a phased way in a continuous process okay for example when we uh, when we are making these videos for you we will go unit wise first you have to understand the unit one then there will be continuity the continuity will go to the unit number two so then three then four so in that way the process of understanding the process of communication will be easier you will be able to understand the things that we, we will learn in unit one it is it it will it will have a continuity in unit two right so in that way it, the communication process also should have a continuity it should go from uh, one step to another then consistency there should be a uh, you know consistency that means the messages uh, should not be repeated okay uh, it should be consistent right so there uh, something uh, out of the blue should not come in between a particular message then it, it will lose its context it will lose the meaning and there will be no clarity okay the next is the channels channel that we have already discussed channel basically means the medium or media through which the people will communicate the, so the choice of a suitable channel for the receiver is very important while you are communicating you should be able to you know choose a channel for example uh, 
in this particular context i have chosen the language english to converse with you as a channel to send the message send my message to you okay so because uh, i have uh, you know uh, through experience or through understanding i have chosen this language because i i am confident that a person who has taken admission in the master degree course will be able to understand this basic uh, english language isn't it so in that way you have to decide and so that this particular channel will be suitable for my receivers here another channel that we can talk about is that we have taken the channel uh, the media form that is the youtube uh, or uh, a te technical uh, you know platform to send the message to you then again we have decided this because we were confident that uh, the the learners our learners will be able to access this particular video through youtube so it will be a suitable channel for us so in that way this is just an example in that way you have in every communication process in every co context you have to be you know you have to suit uh, uh, choose the channel with a proper understanding of your audience of your receiver only then your communication process will be successful the objectives of your communication will be successful only in that case okay now let's uh, you know uh, talk about the last c uh, of communication seven c's that is the capacity of the audience capacity here means the ability of the audience of the receivers to receive the message and to absorb the message to understand the message okay whenever a sender uh, you know forms a message that the sender need to understand to keep in mind uh, the the abilities and habits and you know um, the nature of its receivers whether my receiver will be understand will be able to understand my message okay so keeping that in mind we have to form our message okay uh, keeping in mind whom we are going to address for example if you are talking in your home if you are conversing with your family members the kind of language that you will use will be totally different from you know from the language that you might be using in your office or in your workplace so in that way you have to in a different context you have to uh, keep in mind the capacity of the audience the way you will be conversing with a uh, you know what you can say uh, a, a rickshaw puller okay uh, you will be conversing in a different way then uh, somebody may be in a uh, you know uh, if you are talking with a uh, higher ranking official in a wor uh, in a workplace maybe so you will be in a you will be speaking in a different manner you will be putting different words to your messages so in that way you have to understand you have to form your uh, communication process okay so communication must take into account the capability of the audience Okay. the most effective uh, it is when uh, you know they are re they require the least effort on the part of the recipient to understand the message okay so this will include the factors of availability habit reading availability and the receiver's knowledge based upon that the sender has to form a message okay so uh, this is what we have discussed in this uh, first unit so if we try to uh, go back what uh, what all things we have discussed we discussed that communication is a mutually understandable activity it is a exchange of information between uh, one person uh, with uh, with one's fellow human beings with the use of different methods right and we discussed that uh, you know communication is an uh, is an endless process and it starts with the conceiving of lives in your uh, you know uh, when one person takes birth and you know it continues to uh, throughout one's uh, life so this process essentially involves different elements or components that we have discussed a sender a receiver a channel uh, or a vehicle for movement of the message or the information then feedback we discussed that is the response to the communication we discussed about noise or the disturbances that might interfere you know from a technical or a uh, human uh, problems point of view which might uh, you know put hindrances in understanding the message uh, then similarly we would also uh, like to perceive something only with those aspects with which we feel comfortable and we are familiar okay so we actually communicate something even by not responding to the sender's messages okay when if we not respond to somebody's message 
uh, somebody's you know mm, uh, communication that is also one kind of feedback okay so human beings we communicate in a very rich and sophisticated way other uh, as compared to other species on the planet then we discussed the different c's the seven c's of communication which are very essential elements for a successful communication process to take place so these are the things that you need need to understand in the unit number 1 of this particular course so in the next video we will be discussing the next unit the unit number 2 uh, of this particular course thank you